Greetings from Dixie. What you've got in front of you is a Link Runner Pro. This is about uh, a 10 year old unit. One of the network guys at work uh, gave me this one. It was pretty well trashed by battery acid when he gave it to me. It definitely was non-functional. We'll get into some of those details here shortly. But uh, this is a fairly sophisticated little network device. It's far in excess of what you need for a home network. It's a medium enterprise style unit uh, for doing network checks such as pinging and cable checking and tracing cables. I've got a pretty good reputation at work for being able to fix about anything and uh, rather than just throw this one away because it was so messed up the battery acid decided to just go ahead and give it to me and they'd already bought a new one. So it was free. It has, I've got zero cost basis in it so I decided well I'll play around with it and fix it and I'll probably get some use around the house. My brother and I are big Linux fans. We were thinking in terms of doing some remote access projects over Linux and over the network. So this could come in real handy for doing some checks there. It, uh, as it is hooked up now, I've got a crossover cable hooked up to it so you can see the cable map on the screen. I can also use it to trace uh, network connections. Well, now on to the real purpose of this video. This was pretty well chewed up. What I wound up doing with that one is to take a old remote control and pull the uh, one end of the battery connector out and replace it here. Take the old one that was here, one side was totally destroyed, one side was untouched, and then one over here was totally destroyed with battery acid. So I just took the one out here, cut it in half, put it over here, that fixed that one. And then of course this one got a brand new one from that remote control. This spring steel that they use for these battery uh, holders does not react well to battery acid. Actually two of them had broken off and I tried to clean it to battery acid, got back into this and made it real brittle at the top. So a couple of these actually popped off. That took care of the battery department, uh, but the battery acid had also gotten back in and eaten this one off and damaged these. So what I had to do was take the case apart and actually replace this. Here's where the repairs got delicate. The battery acid pretty well coated this entire area. So the WD-40, and the Dremel tool with a fine wire brush were the best way to get rid of that battery acid. The the uh, WD-40 appears to neutralize the acid fairly well, and this cleans off the residue. In this case, you probably can see that uh, it was broke off right here, so I fabricated a new piece of brass and then soldered the new brass into the old connection. And that gave me a new conductor to contact with the battery pack. Then after extensive WD-40 and wire brushing, I finally got these clean enough to make contact. There was some damage on the bottom of the board, but nowhere near as extensive as this was. That was just a matter of cleaning it up with WD-40 and using the wire brush to get it all polished out. I was lucky that the battery acid did not get back on the main board and destroy any integrated circuits or the wiring to them. So they were fairly untouched. If they had been damaged, that probably would have been the end of this product. I guess there are several things to take away from my little adventure. Number one, unless it's extremely extensive, you probably can fix most battery acid damage with a good soldering iron. A variable welder would be highly advised. A Dremel tool with a wire brush and of course WD-40. In order to avoid this damage, probably the best thing to do is if you're not going to be using it every day, take the batteries out. Set the batteries aside and put them back in whenever you're ready to use the device. This is extremely common for remote controls to be damaged this way. Secondly, if you're going to leave the batteries in, always put the device where the battery acid will flow down, not back into the electronics. That way you're much more unlikely to have to do any repairs on the extremely sensitive printed circuit board areas of the product then you just have to replace this or clean this up. And most damage here is fairly easily repaired. 
again the only thing I already had to get new was this new battery connector from an old remote control everything else was already here it was just a matter of cleaning the battery acid up take your time assemble the correct tools practice your skills and even something this delicate can be repaired take care have a great day hope you found this useful y'all come back now here yeah?